So now we're going to get into level one and level two, which are behavior based goals. So here's some rules for these goals, because the thing is, we often try and run and trying to focus on outcomes, but we haven't set behaviors. And I see this with so many clients, the yo-yo effect. And it doesn't just mean yo-yo with weight. It can be yo-yo with everything. You're yo-yoing with your meditation practice, with mindfulness. You're yo-yoing with your productivity, with your business, whatever it may be. Because we're trying to basically study for a test and cram everything in a short amount of time to get ready for it. But ultimately, we're not really changing. We're not setting proper habits, guys. And remember, like I told you, 95% of everything that you do is subconscious. You don't think about it, it's conditioned into you. So we're trying to rebuild your conditioning to where you're gonna be able to tackle these goals and crush them, guys, and get to a point where you're feeling good about it. You're thinking about a goal and you know there's a perfect process that's gonna lead you to that perfect outcome and a really big one. So some rules to follow here. Behavior goals, the first two levels, must be a choice. It cannot be something that is an outcome. It cannot be, you know, trying to say, I'm going to accomplish this much of something. No, I'm going to choose to do X this many amounts of time in Y time frame. That's ultimately what we're trying to do. Smart principle. Everybody has heard of smart principle. If you haven't, we want to make sure that they're specific measurable, attractive, realistic, and timely. To me, when I coach, especially in this preparation phase, everybody talks a lot about specific and measurable, maybe the why they're attractive, but to me, I focus on realistic. Before you set that goal and you begin the journey of accomplishing that goal, you need to really understand, is it, is it realistic what you're asking of yourself? Because if you've never done anything of that nature, if it's something that's requiring a ton of change, that's gonna become difficult. Remember that when you change one thing about yourself, you have an 85% success rate. That's significant. That's awesome. But the minute you add two things into equation, that success rate drops to about 35%. When you add three or more, almost no chance of success, less than 10%. So yes, I know that you want to run, you want to crush it, and you want to build these massive dreams that you have in front of you. But if we want to do it to where it becomes habitual and you create true vertical growth where you build year after year on your momentum versus going up and down all the time, you have to follow this realistic mindset. And then last one is timely, determining what time frame you're going after. So short, when we're talking about level one, short-term behavior goals are typically less than 30 days. It's something that, you know, most often people usually go for a week. It depends on the type of goal. It depends on the type of amount of repetitions you're doing of it in that time frame. So with business, it may be a little bit longer, but with personal stuff, something that you do daily, that may be just, you know, something like seven days total. Then from there, we have our long-term behavior-based goals, and this is 25 four repetitions. It depends on who you talk to. I've heard 21 times you have to repeat something, 24, 28, in order for it to become a habit. So say if it's like working out, right? It, 30 days may not get you 24 repetitions if you're doing it three times a week. You may need to have eight weeks worth of, worth of this long-term goal in order to create that habit. So that's what you focus on with long-term goals. So we'll move into the bigger ones in the future part, but for now, I just want to give you some good and bad examples of what those are so you understand how to apply them for yourself. So starting out with a good example of a short-term goal will be to turn on meditation app for three times. This is say we're focusing on stress management, which is my favorite thing to talk about because we got a you know black plague epidemic on our times. But the problem is that if you go any more than three times and you've never done it at all, chances of failure is too high. We're trying to build a winning momentum. We want that to be realistic. Now, the other thing that I want you to really pay attention to here is I'm not telling you that you're going to become in a perfect state of Zen three times in a week or seven times in a week or whatever it may be. You're going to turn on your meditation app. Maybe you turned it on for a few minutes and then you fell asleep or you turned it on for a few minutes and your kids bugged you and you got away from it, your partner you know, distracted you, but you have to make this choice three times in a week. It gives us room to grow for, for next week and it gives us opportunity to slip up. Then for a long-term one, we would suggest something like no added sugar for 30 days. Sugar plays a huge role in our stress response and something we don't often talk about when we discuss stress, but your dietary 
sugar intake, especially sugar, because it's a stimulant, has a lot to do with your stress response. So we're simply saying no added sugar. We're not gonna say you're gonna have a perfect diet or anything like that. You're just gonna have no added sugar. You got a craving for a sweet tooth? Go have a banana, right? Pretty sweet, tasty, you might appease that craving. But you're not gonna have any artificial sugars. Now some bad examples to make sure you understand not to make these mistakes. Meditate daily for a week, right? We already discussed this. There's no wiggle room. You're going from zero to a hundred, and that's not reasonable. Your body, you're just expecting too much from yourself, and you're gonna potentially fail. And that's not gonna build the winning momentum, and it's gonna destroy your subconscious psyche and your confidence to accomplish these amazing results that you're trying to go for. And then we have do keto diet for 30 days, right? Very specific. Keto diet's gonna ask you to have a ton of changes from your current behaviors. So so we're not just going to avoid sugar. Now we're going to make sure that we're getting a certain amount of fat, certain amount of protein, certain amount of carbs, just too much change all at once. Yes, you may be good with it for a couple weeks like you have been in your previous diets, but you're going to fall off. And the thing is, a month from now, two months from now, you're not going to be any better off than you were at that point, especially when it comes down to your habits. So these are the bad examples. And then we're going to dive in into your level three and four, which are outcome-based goals. Thanks.